lesson is from the epistle of blessed Paul the Apostle to the Ephesians. Brethren, be strengthened in the Lord and in the might of his power. Put you on the armor of God that you may be able to stand against the deceits of the devil. For our wrestling is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers against the rulers of the world of this darkness, against the spirits of wickedness in high places. Therefore take unto you the armor of God, that you may be able to resist in the evil day, and to stand in all things perfect. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of justice, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In all things, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you may be able to extinguish all the fiery darts of the most wicked one, and take unto you the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The continuation of the Holy Gospel, to St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus spoke to his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is likened to a king who would take an account of his servants. And when he had begun to take the account, one was brought to him that owed him 10,000 talents. And as he had not wherewith to pay it, his Lord commanded that he should be sold and his wife and all his children and all that he had and payment to be made. But that servant falling down besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And the Lord of that servant, being moved with pity, let him go, and forgave him the debt. But when that servant was gone out, he found one of his fellow servants that owed him a hundred pence, and laying hold of him, he throttled him, saying, Pay what thou owest. And his fellow servant falling down besought him, saying, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he paid the debt. Now his fellow servants, seeing what was done, were very much grieved, and they came and told their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord called him and said to him, Thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all the debt, because thou besoughtest me. Shouldst not thou then have had compassion also on thy fellow servant, even as I had compassion on thee? And his Lord, being angry, delivered him to the torturers until he paid all the debt. So also shall my heavenly Father do to you, if you forgive not every one his brother from your hearts. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. Today is the 21st Sunday after Pentecost, and this Holy Mass is being offered for the people of the parish. The 2022 traditional Catholic liturgical wall calendars have come in. They are available in the parish office while supplies last. They go very quickly, so if you want one, I would soon suggest that you do get it. Also today, following this Holy Mass, there will be a group going to the Park Med Abortion Mill on 2nd Avenue and 42nd Street to recite the rosary. So meet, meet in front of the church following the Mass, and the group will go over to pray for the unborn there. Next Saturday at 10.30 a.m. as part of the 40 Days for Life, there will be a Eucharistic Rosary procession from here to uh, Park Med Abortion Clinic on 2nd Avenue and 42nd Street. Uh, so please come to that, plan on attending, to give a prayerful public witness for the sanctity of unborn life. Next Sunday is the World Mission Sunday. The collection for the propagation of the faith will be taken up as a second collection next week. And please take a copy of the parish bulletin and read it for further information on parish events. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. 
My dearly beloved in Christ, today's parable in the gospel is a parable of forgiveness. God, represented by the King, manifests such kindness, mercy, and compassion to the poor servant who cannot pay his debt. He forgives him everything and sets him free. And that debt of that servant is not a small or insignificant one, 10,000 talents. Our debts to God are much, much greater and cannot be computed in talents or in silver or gold. They must be reckoned according to the price of our redemption, which is the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our debts are our miserable sins, be they mortal or venial, which needed to be washed away in the blood of a divine victim. In spite of our goodwill, we increase these debts each day to a greater or lesser extent, if only by faults of frailty and weakness. God knows and has pity on our misery. Each time we place ourselves before him and humbly acknowledge our faults with sincere repentance, he immediately pardons us and cancels all our debts. God is magnificent when he pardons. He does not reproach us for the faults over which we have already wept, nor does he keep an account of them. His pardon is generous, so great and complete, that it not only annuls our debts, but destroys even the memory of them, as if they have never existed. It is enough for God to see us repentant, then every wound, even the most grievous and repugnant, is completely healed by the precious blood of Jesus in the sacrament of confession. Christ's blood is like an immense sea which has the power to cleanse and destroy the sins of all mankind, provided they are sincerely repented of with firm amendment not to commit them again. Every minute of every day we can take the burden, heavy or light as it may be, of our sins and infidelities and make it disappear in this ocean of grace and love by surrendering it all to the sacred heart of Jesus, placing all our sins, weaknesses, imperfections and temptations right into that open wound of his heart from which pours forth that precious blood as a laver to heal and forgive us, to strengthen and console us. When the servant who could not pay his debt was brought to the king and was told that he was going to be sold, the servant begged the king on his knees, be patient with me, be patient. And so never become discouraged with the thought of your sins and miseries. You may say, I pray much, I do penances, I strive to lead a life pleasing to the Lord. I have been serious about my spiritual life for many years, but still I fall into the same habitual sins. I very readily lose my patience. I quickly give in to gossip and uncharitable speech. I'm not quick enough to banish any impure thought or desire from my mind. I am too still attached to the things that this earth, that this world has to offer. I'm not completely giving God my all as I should be. And there can be discouragement which sets in. But we must remember that God is patient with us, provided we are not willfully and deliberately offending him, 
and so then we must be patient with ourselves, knowing that if we have the will, I make that act of the will, I want to serve the Lord, I want to be faithful to Him, I don't want to fall into even the smallest sin or imperfection. God knows that, and He is bringing about good in all things. He's bringing about our growth in holiness. We must trust that any temptation we may endure, any weakness or imperfection, and yes, even your sins, even though God detests them and they are loathsome to him, he is using all for your purification and sanctity. He wastes nothing and brings good out of all things. So bear those crosses of temptation and trial and difficulty and sin. Offer them to the Lord in confident surrender to him and trust that he is acting. The spiritual life is not something that we could say by next month, I want to attain this particular stage. As we might say by next month, I want to lose 20 pounds. It doesn't work that way. We have an entire lifetime to become holy and perfected, and that is what it is. We can't look at a time element when it comes to our holiness or our spiritual lives. We must just trust that God is always working, always active. If we are willing and offering and trusting in him and not on ourselves. St. Padre Pio, in a number of his letters to different spiritual directees, wrote about our weaknesses. In one letter, Padre Pio writes, Heavenly goodness permits weaknesses, not in order to abandon you, but to render you humble and more steadfast, more firm and more tightly attached to the hand of this divine mercy. He also says, take comfort in our most sweet Lord, as you should know that the soul's greatest misery is when it doesn't feel weak, but feels strong, when it trusts in itself, when it is overconfident. And also, oh, if only all souls could experience such a holy weakness, we would not see so many souls fall at every instant. A soul who felt its weakness and had recourse to God for help has never fallen. You may find that when you put too much emphasis on yourself and not enough on God's grace to combat habitual sin, very often you will fall. God will permit that fall as a humiliation because you are not relying completely on him, but on you. When you go to confession and say, I, 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 I did this, or I tried doing this, or I was doing this, where is God in that? We must rely completely on his holy grace. But for the grace of God, go I. If we are not relying on God's grace, we are going to fall. We must trust in his grace and have that as our focus, again, in the midst of trial, difficulty, and temptation. So we should never fear our temptations, but if we are battling them heroically with God's grace, look upon them as a friend that can help us grow in virtue, strengthen us, and uh, help us in this spiritual battle. St. Paul mentions in the epistle today that this battle is indeed a spiritual one against principalities and powers, against darkness, and we're in the midst of it. We must fight it, and we have all the means at our disposal to do so. The armor of faith, the uh, belt of truth, the helmet of salvation. We spiritually put that on every day, covering ourselves in the precious blood of Christ, and move forward in confidence and peace for the daily spiritual battle. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.